Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody, live from Harlem in New York City, it's Alex Bennett and the Ramble. And we're here until midnight tonight. Mm hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. He's a very funny comic and a guy who has a wonderful memory for dates and things like that. Right, Larry? Yes, things that are not important to most people. Okay, let me ask you this, uh, because I, I, I've, I found a, a show that I did. I never could find you. Know, I did the ben, Alex Bennett Comedy Hours. Do you remember those? On uh, PBS? No. No, that was uh, that was comedy tonight. This was on uh, Channel Forty Four. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, and I did two of them, uh, and uh, I never could find the second show. And today I just found it. Okay, <laughs> and so I I downloaded all the various portions of it. I'm going to reassemble it as a full show. But Marjorie said to me, "When was that?" <laughs> and I couldn't remember when that was. So do you have any idea when that was? Uh, I don't have a distinct uh, date. No, I'm going to try to guess. Do you know the year? No, that's the problem. I, you know, I, it was it, did I do it on my second pass back at Live 105 or did I do it during my first pass? I oh, think. second pass is like, I'm going to say it was around uh, 96. Ninety six. Okay. All right. Okay. I probably, if I look up, I can look up. Maybe, I think I maybe have a copy of the ad from TV Guide, and it might have a date on top of it or something. I don't know. It would, yeah. But I have no idea when it was. I have no idea. You know. Um, I mean, was it the old? Uh Channel Forty Four building. Uh, yeah, well, that's where we that's where we edited it and put it together and so on and so forth. But it was done at the Great American Music Hall. Okay. Yeah. You weren't on any of those shows, were you? No. Why? I wonder. I should have put you on there. You know, you were one Maybe of my. Was... Huh? Really. Well, uh, let's see. Guy, I do. Uh, I do remember. How many? Do you remember who was on them? Well, on this show that I'm currently doing, Eddie Strange. Oh, Ross Bennett. Yes. It, that that was his name, right? That's his real name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Strange wasn't a bad comic, you know. Uh, Susan Healy, Bobby She's Slayton, Dana Gould. Um, I'm trying to remember who else. I think oh Bob Rubin, Bob Rubin was on that. So okay, yeah. So I'd love to see those. Yeah, well, those are well. I'll, I'll, well, if you had a a, a uh, internet, I could tell you how, where you could <laughs> watch them. But unfortunately, you know. So, so how are you doing, by the way? Good. Uh, you said something the last time we talked that I thought was uh, very good. That. Uh, we talk about getting old and being in entertainment. Wait a minute. We just lost him. We just lost him, folks. I got to go find him. I got to go again. Here we go. And, uh, see, this happens. Okay. Come on. There he is. Are you there? Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, yeah what happened? Anything on your end? I don't know. It just went dead for it a It just second. went dead. Well, welcome to the wonderful world of Skype. Skype. Uh, it's always uh, Skype, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing uh, doing this on Skype. I never have this problem on any other system, so, you know, I don't understand. Anyway, where were we? We were talking about everybody in show business has their time. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. You know, there's some people who have too much time. And others who have too little. Too little. I'm trying to think. People that have had 
he, although he's still good, is uh, Clint Eastwood, who's I think now ninety four. Yeah. Well, he's still able to do it, you know. I mean, uh, and bring it, but I don't know that he's that creative anymore. You know, it's kind of like at that point in your life, and I find it's true for me, you run on fumes. You know? Mm -hmm. So, so I don't know. I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Fumes? Well, I read that uh, a bunch of people got upset, a bunch of comics, when I said, I read that your creative ability almost goes to zero after you hit 60. So maybe. Well... You quit inventing. I, I think it's right. You, well, you, I went further than that. I mean, you quit inventing at about that time. In other words, yeah, as yeah. I said, you're running on fumes. In other words, you're, you're running on your past, right? And yeah, that's why you see all these old rock bands. They can do their old songs, but they're not coming up with new ones. They haven't put out an album in 15 years. The Stones yeah. didn't do a new album for 15 years. Wow. Okay. You find that hard to believe, but they had nothing to contribute, you know. Right. And then when they did, eh, it was so-so, you know. Uh, uh, I kept coming up with ideas, I think, until I was about 78, 79. And now I don't come up with any new ideas anymore. You know, I just... I, we've, had, we've had our time. <laughs> well, I could return to the old ideas, you know. And live off of them for a while, yeah. But I find that kind of difficult for me. I I always liked. I always prided myself on coming up with new ideas, new ways of doing things. You know, and when I went to the internet, I, I decided uh, because I could use Zoom and I could use Skype and so on, and I could put on more than one person at a time. I created what I called the Citizen Panel. So that I had callers. I had like five, six, seven, up ten callers sometimes, all interacting with each other. And that was a new thing. You know, that had never been done. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that on radio. I, I, I tried doing that on radio years ago. Let me explain to you. This is hard to explain. It's going to take a little bit of time. Remember those phones we had that were like business phones, and they had like four buttons, and each one was a different yeah. line? Okay. Uh -huh. Well, most radio stations, that's what we had. You know, so I would do a talk show. I'd push so-and-so, line one, uh, who are you? You know, and then I'd talk to them for a while. Then i go to line two, go to line three. We, we discovered something. This was here in New York, I believe, yeah, that if you go into the phone, they had... Un, uh, to the, beside each of those buttons a little kind of metal... A thing uh, that prevented you from pressing down two at a time. So you press one, and then this metal thing would go into place, and then you press two, and the metal thing would go into place, but you couldn't push two at a time. But if you remove that metal piece, you could then push four buttons down at a time. And therefore, you could have four people on at the same time talking to each other. I didn't know that. That's wild. And I did that in New York. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I now I never could do it. I never was able to do it anywhere else because they didn't like me fooling around with the telephones and so on. Over at ABC, they didn't care. Uh, so, uh, but then I came to the Internet and I came up with Skype, for instance, in which I had, you know, five people calling at once, ten people calling at once, up to 25 people calling at once if I wanted it and never got that high. And I could I could do it that way. So I was back to my old uh, tricks, you know. But now I could do it in a new technologically wonderful way. So, Well, that, you were the only one on radio that would go to it. You would take a call without having it screened. <laughs> it was very dangerous. <laughs> I didn't believe in screening calls. I, I, I uh, be, uh, well, later on, I did have calls screened, but I didn't believe in screening calls because I felt it took the spontaneity away from the show. Yeah. You know, I like the idea that people would call and I wouldn't know who they were. And, uh, yeah, they could be trouble, you know. If they started swearing, I would hit the, the uh, button 
the delay button. Uh, but, you know, that happened very s- seldom, actually. You know, right. people, people were pretty okay with it. Um, but, no, I just like to hit the phone and go, hey, who is this? You know, and then we'd have fun. You know, so. Yeah, but I, I, have I come up with anything creative since the citizen panel? Nothing. Zero. Zilch. <laughs> we got nothing. <laughs> I got no. nothing. You know. <laughs> but I always prided myself on being inventive and doing new stuff and so on and so forth. I just can't come up with it anymore. I'm sorry. You know. And I don't know if I want to. <laughs> so that's another point. You know? Right. So. Well, we, you, that's why you were talking about people that died when they're really young in show business, and they always leave us legacy, but uh, you wonder what they would have become. But Yeah. I saw I saw a guy. Uh, remember the uh, the I saw Moon as a kid at the end of his career? It looked like he was really interesting. It was Ernie Kovacs. Uh, Ernie Kovacs was, uh, well, you say towards the end of his career, his career was cut short by an automobile accident. Right. Um. Who knows what he would have done, although I think he was also starting to burn out. He was very inventive in the beginning of television, of his career. But then he went into movies and doing stuff like that, and he just wasn't inventive anymore. I mean, everybody oh, okay. everybody goes, oh, Ernie Kovacs, what a pioneer. And sure, he was at that time. But then he stopped being a pioneer. Then he went on and made movies. He had a problem. Uh, and I don't know if you know this story, but he had a, a son uh, and, of course, a, a mother of that son who then kidnapped the kid. And uh, <laughs> I, th- I think that's what happened and, and uh, took off with the kid. And Ernie Kovac spent all his time when he wasn't on the air looking for this kid and spending almost every penny he had to hire detectives to try and trace the kid down. So that's what was happening when he wasn't doing a show. So how inventive can you be while you've got something else on you? Yeah, inhibit your creativity. Yeah, it, it puts a little damper on your creativity. So then he went, so he went and did movies and things like that. Anything that would make him money so he could pay for the process of trying to find the kid. And I can't remember whether he ever did or didn't. Okay. That's a great story. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Do you know all this trivia about well, I don't know a lot of trivia, but I know enough, you know. Um, do, do you have any questions for me? <laughs> well, I, that was, I'd like, now you got me, I'd like to find out what happened to Ernie Kovacs' kid. You know, that I don't know. I don't know if he ever found him, you know. Uh, but uh, I'm sure they probably, I think he probably did, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, then, he, and then he died in a car crash, driving driving home, I think, or going down to the grocery store or something like that. Uh, Christmas party. Was it a Christmas party? Okay. See? Might, have, might have been a Dean Martin's, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I was in L.A., are you looking that up right now, or did no? I, I just looked it up a long time ago. Oh, it was, really? It was a party. It was 1962. Oh, so he might have been a little drunk. Could have been, yeah. Wow, isn't that a shame? See that? That's Wanna... a shame. When I, I sometimes I'll be watching a movie or watching an old TV show because I like YouTube. I go to YouTube and just watch old stuff all the time. And uh, I'll see somebody, and I'll go, God, he was great. Why do you have to die? You know? What, what, why, why, why isn't he, why didn't he have a longer career? Why didn't people understand what a talent he was or whatever? You know, and I get depressed over things like that. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't remember uh, who I was watching the other day. Yeah, I'll tell you who I was watching just yesterday. Doing a tap dance in a movie to the song Lady Be Good. And she's doing the dance with a dog. 
if you can imagine. And the dog was amazing. The dog was doing twirls and on his hind feet, walking behind her and beside her and all of that. <laughs> and she's tap dancing. And she happened to be the best tap dancer ever in movies. Do you know who that woman was? No idea. Ever heard of Eleanor Powell? I heard of her, yes. She was incredible. In fact, Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, all the big dancers said that she was the best. She was better than any of them. And in fact, I have a film she did with Fred Astaire, dancing with Fred Astaire, tap dancing with him. And she's not keeping up with him. He's having to keep up with her. Wow. That's how good she was. And she was considered the best that ever was. I mean, if you ever see, get to see a video of, of uh, Eleanor Powell dancing, you will just, your jaw will drop. Okay? She was that good. By the way, she was white. That, that's the other factor. <laughs> Oh, uh, and she could uh, she could out tap dance anybody. I mean, Bilbo Jangles Robinson. I think she was better than he was. All right. Holy crap! So uh, better than Fred Astaire. I mean, we're talking about at, at tap dancing, not any of the ballet stuff or what have you. And then she also worked as an actress at MGM for a while, and she only worked for eight years. And then she married an actor by the name of Glenn Ford. And uh, she quit show business. She said, I'm going to stay home, be a mom, be a cook, be a you know wife to my husband. And that's what she did. You know? It's, she, uh, <laughs> it's hard to imagine someone successful in show business actually quitting. Well, I'm watching this, and I'm saying, you know, this is part of her eight years. She was so good. It was just a shame she ever quit. But probably there was something in her that said, I, you know, I, show business is nice and I, I have had fun, but who needs it? Well, some yeah. people don't really like it that much. So I could understand that. Well, well you had a guy like uh, Jimmy Cagney. Uh, Jimmy Cagney said, I'm going to work until I'm 65 and then I'm going to retire. That's exactly what he did. He worked till his sixty fifth birthday, never did another movie. Did his last film, which was um one, two, three. Uh-huh. A film by um uh, uh Wilder, uh I'm trying to remember the guy's first name, who did the apartment and things like that. Did this film called One Two Three with Jimmy Stewart. He's amazing in it. He's wonderful in it. Uh he he uh, he plays the uh, the president of the Coca Cola Company in Germany, whose daughter falls <laughs> in love with a communist from the other side of the wall or whatever. And then he, the father of the girl, is coming to visit, and of course they're from Georgia. <laughs> An idea of her with a communist would just be horrible and and hurt Cagney's career. And this film just gets faster and faster and faster and faster. And by the end, it's going a mile a minute. And I think that's why it's called One, Two, Three. And uh, it was his last movie. That was it. Goodbye. That was it. I you know, I that. worked that the film. I worked the film with full energy, and now I'm gone. See you later. <laughs> Time to retire. He looked upon it as a job, you know. What do you do with a job? You retire at 65. So he retired. He did come back and do one more film. Do you know what that film was? Uh, I'm going to guess Ragtime. You're absolutely right. How did you know that? 1981. Wow. He came back and did Ragtime, and the reason he did it, broke his rule of 65, I think he was like 81 at the time or something like that. Uh, the reason he uh, came back was he was not well, and his doctor said, for the sake of your health, go back and do another movie. Really? Because it's something that invigorates you, that gets you the juices in you going, and you should do it. So he went and did Ragtime. Uh, and that was his last film. You know, 
didn't which do which I never saw, and I don't know if it was any good. It was okay. It was an okay film. It wasn't bad, you know. Hmm. I'm drinking coffee here to keep me awake. Not that you bore me or anything like that. <laughs> I put a lot of people to sleep. So. Do you drink coffee? Uh, no, I get my caffeine from uh, Diet Coke Zero. Coke Zero? Does it have caffeine? I guess it does, huh? It does. I don't know how much, but someone said it, uh, not as much as coffee, but it is quite a bit. But I don't know what it is. How wonderful is Coke Zero? I mean, it tastes... It, uh, it's so much better than Diet Coke. It tastes... No, but forget Diet Coke. It tastes just like regular Coke. Very close, yeah. It's, they came very close to getting that, uh, that uh, down. So, you know. But anyway, so uh, a, a, any other little pieces of information you want off of me about movies? Uh, well, people that stayed too long, who, uh, who, who stayed too short. <laughs> I remember there was a woman named, uh, I think it was, was it Carrie Snodgrass? Yeah, yeah, that was her name. She got nominated for an Oscar, her first film, and then didn't do another film for years. <laughs> Maybe it freaked her out. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I don't understand. There's some people who just, I guess, they just don't like being in movies. I mean, if you, you know, you and I can't imagine that because, you know, we would die to do a movie or something like that. But there are people that just go, eh, this isn't for me, you know. A lot of people. Well, I think there's some people that might get freaked out of being famous, too. Well, that's true. But sometimes, you know, making movies, people think of making movies as being just, oh, it's got to be exciting, you know. But you're in your trailer most of the time. And they just drag you out when they need you to do the scene, and you do the scene, and then yeah, it's back to the trailer You're there again. 12 or 16 hours a day. Yeah. Very and this boring, go- and, actually. And many <laughs> times, this goes on for like six months. Okay. And you see a two-hour movie, it took six months to make. How much of that time was spent in the trailer? Yeah, and, and, uh, most of it. So people go, you know, this is pretty exhausting. I don't need this. You know, I made enough money already. Goodbye. I'll see you later. Don't need to do any more. You know what I wonder? Here's one for you. These people who have, like, a... A whole bunch of hits, one right after the other. Boom, boom, boom. Huey Lewis, good example. Okay? One hit after another. And then all of a sudden, no more hits. Now, why does that happen? I mean, you would think that if you knew how to make a hit, and then you knew how to make another hit, and then you made like 10 hits in a row, you could at least make an 11th. (laughs) Yeah, well, he had a... He had a very good run, but it wasn't very long. But it was it was one major hit after another, you know. Another guy we know, Greg Kinn, who just died recently. Greg had one hit after another. Boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden, pfft, nothing. Nothing, and then I think he got into radio. Yeah, and I don't think I ever got a chance in talking with him and knowing him to ask him the question, why didn't you have another hit? You know, what happened? Sometimes it's something as simple as they change managers and the guy didn't know how to handle the guy. You know? Right, yeah. Uh, but yet, on the other hand, you have people like Elton John, one hit after another for most of his life. Yeah, 30, 40 years, Christ. Then you got a guy like Billy Joel. There's a good example. You, you know when he wrote and produced his last big hit? I think it was like 20, it's been a while. 20 years ago. Then he didn't, he didn't write anything. And I saw an interview with him, and he said, eh, I got tired of writing. You know, <laughs> really? I, the process of writing, I didn't, you know, I didn't enjoy it. Well, that's the great thing about music, though, because you can you get a few hit songs, you can ride those. For, people want to hear them over and over. Well, also they get used in commercials, and they you know they it, it, you have a couple of hits. It can pretty well keep you in the money for years. It can pay the bills. The best example of that is uh, what's his name? Uh, is Leonard 
Green Bomb, Spirit in the Sky. Yeah. Which one, was a one song he wrote in 1970, which still gets used in movies and ads today. Yeah. That's 50 yeah. years. But I wonder how much money that makes him. You know, I, I can, can you pay the bills? You know, that's a good question. Uh, but um, hey, I'm, I'm looking. We're we're running out of time here, Mister Mister. Uh, uh, yeah, because we're one hit wonders. Because <laughs> we're one hit wonders. See how many new <laughs> ideas I had in this interview. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Thank you. It's Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Larry. Good having Larry Bubbles Brown here. And uh, we'll uh, do uh, Larry again next week. We always, we are up to almost, we're going to hit uh, hun- uh, 250 episodes with Larry in just about, oh, I don't know. Two, three months, something like that. I looked it up, and I it, it, uh, we're at something like uh, that was number one. That was number 243 or something. 244 will be next week, so that gives us about six more weeks. Or no, three more weeks, and we'll be up to uh, uh, our 250th episode with Larry. Mm. I think that's the longest time anybody's been with us. So, you know, that's cool. Anyway, let's uh, bring on our uh, our citizen panel here. They're uh, they're ready to go here, and uh, there's uh, Jeff Stein and uh, Charlie Wallace and uh, Josh Wheeler. There we go. There they're all trying to figure out whether they're hooked up right and so on. Hello, Josh. Hello. Yeah, and here comes Alan. Here comes Alan. Alan's uh, going to join us now. Science, what does it say? The great thing about science is is that it's true no matter whether you believe in it or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's from Neil deGrasse Tyson. Well, it, it is. It's it, that's true. That's uh, the, that's uh, I, I that's an, an I I agree with that. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Hello to Josh. How you doing, Josh? Doing good. Yeah, we get Josh on every other Friday because every other Friday he's working. So uh, here he is. And, uh, of course, there's Jeff and there's uh, Alan. Hello, Alan. How are you? Um, uh, good. Didn't have, good to, didn't, have to go, didn't have to go feed your mother mm-hmm. tonight? Tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow night. Oh, okay. Well, usually it's on Fridays, but this week it's tomorrow. Yeah, that's very nice. You're My good. sister alternate. The sister and I alternate. You're you're a, you're a good son. Yeah. <laughs> well, you seem thrilled by that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Must be fun. No, I was a lousy son. I was a terrible yeah. son. Yeah. But uh, only to my mother. My father, I was I adored. You know. So. I was now, a dead. Jeff thinking, was he good to his mother or not? Who? <laughs> was Jeff good to his mother or not? Yeah. Yeah, my mother was pretty good. Okay, you're pretty good. She's not still alive, obviously. Yeah. No, if she was, she'd be very old. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you know why? Because you're very old. That's true. So I, I went to... I, what? What? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, my mother's ninety, going on ninety-one. Really? In a couple, in a couple weeks. Yes. Yeah. She in good health? Uh, in good health. Yeah. I mean, my sister and I joke that she's going to outlive us. <clears throat> probably. Yeah, could be. Probably. Right. You know, uh, I, uh, I I went I, I went to PT today, physical therapy. Oh, how'd that go? Well, I mean, it was like the first level. So they kind of get to know you. Uh, thing and of course you know what I, I always often said I hated about physical therapy is not what you have to do when you're there but what you have to do when you go home Homer you know I'm not used to working out at home okay you know so now I have a few things I have to do and I'm trying to figure out how to do them and I can't haven't figured it out yet so you know she gave me these uh, these uh, things to do 
and I'm going to do them. And the next time I see her is maybe in about a week and a half. And uh, then we start having our regular weekly get-togethers. And I only have to see her once a week, so it's no big deal. Yeah. But she do made me feel little, bad. What? Do you have a little bicycle that you can exercise? I have one about this big. Little, little, <laughs> really, really little bicycle. It's a, it's a bike with one, one wheel. With one wheel. Oh, you mean you, yeah. you're talking about Marjorie bought one of those, what do they call them? Pelotons. Pelotons. Yeah. And after about three months, she sold it. You know, she just found she was getting tired of using it. She didn't like it that much. Just the thing with the little wheels that you put in front of the, uh, and pedals in front of the couch or under your yeah. desk. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. No, yeah, no, no. Heard. We're talking about Pelotons. No, we're talking, Jeff's talking about yeah. the little thing that has one wheel and stuff and it's about yeah. this big. Fits under your desk. Yeah, but that or... isn't the kind of yeah. exercises yeah. I have I to do. I actually, they, 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 they're so modern with their exercising now, they won't let you cheat. You know, usually you get PT. They say, go home, do this, do that, do, do this once a day, do this once a day, do this once a day, and then you never do it, right? Of course not. But course. they have now, uh, at this place, you go online and you have to fill out a thing saying what <laughs> activities you did. Yeah. So now I have to outwardly lie when I haven't done something, you know. But the thing made me feel good is yeah, she good. she gave me a lot of little exercises and things like that and looked at my walk and so on and so forth and said, you're not in bad shape. She said, really, you don't even need the cane. She said, but I'm not going to tell you not to use it if it makes you feel more comfortable, yeah. you know. But uh, but you don't you don't need it, and by the time we're through, you w will not want to use it. Okay, so so hopefully we're okay. You know, we'll see what happens. So th that's my excitement for the day. I went to PT. I don't know if I agree with her. You know, you 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 get to a a certain place or age in life or something where that cane is a security thing for you. You may not need it. But you might probably take it anyhow because in your mind, if you don't have it, you might fall. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's really why I use why I have it. But the problem is that when you have it, you have a tendency to then use it. Okay. Yeah. So now you're relying on it just to make your walking easier all the way around, rather than exercising yourself. You know? Okay. So I mean, it, 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 it you could take it either way. But she said, you, I don't feel. She said, looking at you and the way you walk and all that, that you really need the uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the cane. Uh, the cane. So, but I'm going to keep using it anyway. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm going to lie about the working out thing. So, you know. everybody does, I'm sure. Well, I did. I did all my exercises for today, so I figure I don't need to do them for another week. I don't think, do I? Yeah. No, there are four different exercises, and we do them once a day. So, oh no, no, three reps a day. Oh. Yeah. Well, ten, ten, ten things of it, and then three of them a day. So, anyway, that's me. That's my workout. Isn't everybody excited with this? Oh yeah. yeah, I knew that you would be. That's why I brought mm -hmm. it up. I'm glad you're doing. It. Anyway, so how's it going, Josh? You've been working. Yeah, a little bit. Yep. How you been doing? We've well, been so, doing okay. Have you been following the news? A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been a little slower the last few days. You know, post everything, but mm -hmm. uh, been watching a little bit. Yeah. Did you see the? Did you see the speech? I mean, the interview rather. You know what? I did not see that yet because I did work last night. Um, I read about it a little bit. Um, there was a few articles I saw in the newspapers, and uh, I read one in, uh, there's this newspaper called The Hill, which used to be a publicized newspaper in D.C. Yeah. Like an inside the Capitol thing, but, you know, their internet now and everything. I check its website. They had a little article about it and stuff. I mean, I heard it was, uh, or kind of read, look, you know, that it was, Nothing, 
you know, she didn't say anything bad or anything. Nothing didn't hurt anything and, you know, probably didn't help anything. It was, you know, just an interview. Yeah, I felt it was a terrible interview. I felt the interviewer was horrible. Really? Yeah, I felt she didn't. You know, a, a good interviewer, If you know, a politician are not going to choose to answer every question you throw at them. And when they want to avoid one, they simply go off on a tangent. Yeah, right. And, and Waltz did that in this interview, where she asked him about the, the drunk driving charge he had against him 30 years ago that people seemed to be bringing up. Yeah, he shouldn't really worry about that. And he didn't say, he just completely went off. It was like she asked him that question, and he answered this question over yeah, here. Yeah, right. I mean, that's... Typical. What about your drunk driving? And you know, they tend to say five words about it. Like, yeah, that was a long time ago, and unfortunately, I regret it. But since that day, I haven't stopped fighting well, he for didn't American even, he, health care. He didn't even no, do that. Funny. He didn't even do that. <laughs> you know, yeah, he, he yeah. went off on a complete tangent, yeah. and I, that di that disappointed me on his part. But more than that, it disappointed me on the interviewer's part. Because she should have just rolled right back to it and said, but I asked you this question, now are you going to answer it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they, and they, I mean, should, they let Trump do that. You know, Trump has been basically just saying whatever he wants for, you know, a decade, so. And people don't follow up any questions on him. No, nah, I mean, he pretty much just says whatever he wants. I mean, they've tried to push back over the years, but he just keeps talking. It doesn't matter. You know, the, that'll never stop until they just stop interviewing him, you know, I mean, but no one's going to do that. So, you know, but I mean, what 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 you're describing is fairly typical anyway. I mean, it's not like Trump invented it or anything. He took it to a whole other level, you know, but it's not as if that stuff didn't exist for really for quite well. Forever. Well, no, but that's the way they are. That's why I when yeah. I was doing, uh, you know, I was doing radio and I had the opportunity to interview politicians. Most of the time, I never did, because I found that most of the time, I was never going to be able to get a straight answer out of them. So why waste my time? Well, that's, that's why I really haven't been uh, upset or obsessed like some people have about why hasn't she done a sit-down interview. I mean, you know, because, I mean, what are you going to get from it that you don't already... I mean, do you really well, need well, my, that my to make question up your is, mind? My you question know? was, why she should she do a sit-down interview? Well, I would agree with that, but yeah. You know, why? You know, you know why? If it's going to turn out to be like this, where this dip, dippy uh, person that was interviewing her, Dana Bash, I think it was, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, didn't ask her, didn't follow up on that question, what do we need the interview for? You know? <laughs> Yeah, it's, that's why, you know, I didn't think that it was, I don't think it's a big deal. You know, I, I don't, I mean, if someone really needs that to make up their mind, you know, I guess so be it because, you know, each citizen can have their own criteria and their own mm -hmm. mind for how they want to decide who they vote for. That's fine. Uh, certainly wouldn't deny that. But mm -hmm. I don't, I agree. I don't, I don't see what any sit down interview really teaches you about you know, anything the candidate, you know, like, like, you know, she sets down to do a 60 minutes interview and all of a sudden, oh, you know, she's great. You know, wow. She'll make a great president. Why? Because she could do an interview for 30 minutes. I mean, you know, well, I, yeah, so what's we, even uh, worse and you know, that's it, what's even worse and it's coming up is a debate. I mean, what does yeah. a debate prove? Well, we've gotten to the point where they don't do my, I mean, you know, they've, I think they used to be much better. They've certainly no, but evolved. What, what does it prove? In yeah. other words, you, you're you're getting somebody to be president of the United States. His mm -hmm. skill set should be things like diplomacy, mm -hmm. Trump diplomacy, my ass, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but um, uh, diplomacy and uh, uh, you know economics and knowing how things work and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But a debate that none of that comes out in a debate. Just two people yelling and screaming at each other. Well, they've like certainly that. gotten that way. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, I all I wanted to say is I like that, that that she wants an open mic policy, unlike what Biden wanted, and Trump made us think about it. But now he's decided he's going to go ahead and do it. No, he, she, no, I, he's not doing it. They're doing uh, it with a closed mic. Oh well. Oh, that's too bad because she wants to push him. To the point where he starts screaming and yelling. 
Well, I mean, he can still start that, screaming. That and never yelling. looks good in court, and he's <clears throat> used to that. And so, and we're used to him screaming and yelling. Too. Well, she, I mean, she, uh, no, she, he, he. What happened was when they when they made the rules for the thing, he yeah. wanted an open mic, okay? okay, and Biden didn't, right? Okay, so Biden got his way for both debates. So the rules were set up for this debate. She simply wanted to change them and leave the mics open, but they Absolutely. said, no, that's not... That, oh, what Trump has said is, no, that wasn't what, is, what was agreed on. Because quite frankly... But, but he, I, think, I, think, I think she wants the mic open because she knows she can push him. Mm -hmm. She can remain calm. Oh, yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. You know, yep. and uh, much I... Much smarter than he thinks. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen if, for instance, in the middle of the debate, he says something, they come back to her, and then she looks at him and asks him a question. Are they going to open his mic? I don't know how they're going to do it. I, I don't know. You know, that's why I go, oh, look, you know, really, they should come out in leotards and wrestle. That's, that's all I think. That's what I would pay. I would sign up to yeah, see. It's, it's, it's like... The sit-down interview, the debate, it's really just a, 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 a mm -hmm. handful of different ways that we've developed to give people different options to evaluate who they want to vote for. Some people like to see this, some people like to see that, and all that's fair enough. And But they've evolved into some nonsense, which, you know, is the way that it is. But I think, you know, the data looks like that there are very few people who don't really know who to vote for it, like at this point. Like, they're, you know, everyone is pretty decided. Trump isn't really going to lose any more people. Harris can pick up some of the undecideds and things like that. So, you know, it all really looks like she will have an overall lead in the popular vote. She will poll slightly better somewhere in like the 52 48 thing but it will just come down to how well democrats turn out their people on election day and vote especially in the key states you know i mean it looks like he will lose the popular vote for the third time in a row you know and, and all these things and, and she will be slightly more popular in the country you know than he is not a ton but you know two three percentage points so it just looks like it's all about can they get places you know like wisconsin and michigan can they get the black vote etc out in the heavy areas like madison and detroit and can they run up margins in those areas that outdo the rural areas where he will get, you know, 72, 73% of the vote, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it just, so it looks like to me, like that's all that, that's mm -hmm. it. And really nothing is going to change between now and election day, no matter what interviews, speeches, rallies, debates, doesn't matter. I mean, literally short of some bombshell event unheard of, you know, in our history, Nothing is going to change, and it will just. Be, and we're just, we're just status quo, sitting yeah. around waiting for the polls to open, right? You know, I mean, you know, I mean, so to me, that's what it looks like. I mean, if people disagree, I mean, I, I'll hear it. I don't know all about it, but that's just what I read on it. You know, we're just waiting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, sitting around waiting for the polls to open, and if Democrats do not turn out. They're going to get stuck with this ass clown again, and it's, you know, uh, I mean... I think, on. I You've think... You've got to give up a few hours of your life. I, I think she has, I think she's created a, a certain excitement yes. over voting for her, whereas I don't know if Democrats would have necessarily turned out for Biden. Yeah, I, I'm hard to disagree with that. I mean, I certainly, you know, I think he would have had a good showing, but the problem is a good showing isn't going to do it, right? We need what Democrats have gotten the last few times they won a major election and got momentum with them, which was a 2008 turnout type deal. And Biden was able to get a lot of people to vote for him in 2020 who were sick of Trump. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it was a it was a good 
turnout. He, he outdid a lot of what Hillary had done four years before that, and that was the difference. Well, most, you know, most of the polls this time were him up against Biden, yeah. and people weren't that sure about Biden. Now yeah. with Kamala Harris, there seems to be an excitement about her, yeah. you know, which I think is going to carry over into the vote, you know. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. But it, it just has to be strong turnout because, you know, I'm, I'm you know, because of as we've seen in these rural areas, Trump has a dedicated following. And, and I mean, to me, these people are going to go vote. But how can they? This, how is, they, uh, this I, is their life to them. It is so. Yes. America is such a disappointing place to live in right now. If this guy, this ass clown, as you called him. Well, uh, it can even get even the dumbest person in America, it can get Beavis and Budhead to vote for him. Yeah. You know? I, I agree. I mean, I mean, uh, okay, I understand you're a religious person. You're, you're a Republican and you're a religious person. Is this a religious person? No. You know? Yeah. Is this somebody who has the morals of a, of a decent human being? No. <clears throat> I mean, we'll see. We'll let everyone else see what they think, you know, and Kevin and them. But, but that's that's what I'm saying is, you know, like where I live. I mean, I almost should do it so that you could put it up on the web or whatever. I should just drive through my housing development with my camera on the dash, and and send it to you so that you can see that every house in this development has a sign or a flag for him. Most, a good number of them have two or three or four signs and flags. Well, uh, maybe I, mean, I the latest maybe and greatest I, flag uh, Maybe I week. can sit here and say I don't see how those people could stand to vote for this morally corrupt human being. However, right. I'm beginning to say, why is it you live in that neighborhood? Well, I have no, <laughs> yeah. you know, this is where I live. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure if, you know, when Kevin goes into the outskirts, even in a state like California, and you get into those rural areas, that is what you probably see, you know? I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we went to, I said before, you know, after the 2020 election, in 2021, we were in Western PA, driving around in the middle of nowhere, Western PA, out where the Flight 93 crashed on September 11th, and all these little towns like Somerset and all that, and you're driving around on these two-lane roads, and it's been a year since he lost the election, and they still have the signs in the yard. Yep. They still have, I mean, it's, it's, so that's what I'm saying. Those people are going to go vote. They are going to get up that morning at five o'clock and they're going to be standing in line when the polls open and they're going to vote. So if, if Democrats of whatever race or whatever don't match that, they're going to lose. Hmm. But, but overall in the country, she is more popular. And I think, that people are worn out with him. The problem is his people are dedicated and they will go vote. So yeah. they have to turn out the other crowd, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's what Kevin says he sees out there where he lives. Yep. See it all over. And I was doing some traveling the last couple of weeks and I've seen it all over. Hmm. It ain't, it's out there. And, and I, you know, I've, I've got, we brought, COVID back from Canada, so I was laid up for the last week, and I got to watch a lot of... What? You I, got I sat COVID? around and watched... You got COVID? I watched a lot of uh, the... Uh, uh, I tortured myself with some Live Now, Fox Live Now, which carries every fucking Trump rally, or as he referred to them today as shows. He called them shows. Did he call them... Uh, uh, no, that's an honest appraisal of his... Uh, of it is his, an honest uh, appraisal yeah, of it. It's yeah. a show. He goes, all my all my first-time Joes up in the front row here, they're all here for the shows. And I and he said it by accident, obviously. And I'm going, oh, there you go. You're on the money now, you dumb yeah. shit. Mm -hmm. right. and, and those people <clears throat> sat there. And I watched this, you know, because I had nothing else to do. I was just sitting here. And I watched it for over an hour, and he went over, I watched it over almost two hours, and he went over the same stuff over and over Did again. Did he say anything? About, Did he have any policy there? Oh, he's, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do, she does this, she, everything that he could think of bad to say about her, she doesn't care about people. She doesn't care about this. She's going to bring MS-13 back over the border. Millions of people are coming... 
And he would go through that segment of stuff, say a couple things, and then go back over it again. And if you, there was ever a definition of gaslighting, that's what it is. And then he got to a point where they were probably telling him, okay, we're done. It's time to go. He'd go, oh, you know, this is, we're having a great day. It's only 100 degrees in here, I think. We should just, we don't really need to go on. We don't need to leave. We got a lot of time. We'll just take a couple more hours, right? And he's looking and everybody turns around to the people behind him that are sitting there getting paid probably to sit there. And they're saying, we should stay another hour. And he'd go through the same crap again for another 45 minutes. And it's just, and these people just sit there like this. And, and they're sucking it all in. It's all just, they're all sponges. But you know what, you know what I noticed. And then they leave, yeah. and this is what Josh is saying. They're leaving, and they're going out to their other 800,000 people that couldn't get in and telling them, this is what he said. This is great. This is great. And, you know, but I'm telling you, it's a very close race right I, now I, I don't know about, just because of that. I don't know about those 8,000 people waiting outside. No, I said 800,000. you got to remember, it's 800,000. No, 800,000. Because yeah. as I've looked at those current Trump rallies, there are a lot of empty seats. Well, yeah, they kept them close, right? And then at the end, uh, after the rally, they they said, oh, there was a little incident about some guy that jumped over the press railings and stuff. because the, And they panned back and they said, well, we usually keep right on the podium and stuff, but here's a shot from back behind. And it was so much space in there. The seats were full, not yeah. all of them, but the, you could see empty seats. And, you know, there was, there was a lot of space in there. And the 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 venue wasn't that big and he made it sound like there was you know eighty thousand people in there and if i saw 15 maybe 20 it was a little hockey arena on the whole she's drawing many more people to her rallies than he is to his yeah, and in larger he's blowing venues. it all out of proportion which is his way and it's just i just sat there and i said this guy is just gaslighting the shit out of these people and these people are sitting there sucking it in and yeah. then they'll go out and they'll buy all their flags and their vendors and their hats and all their shit. They even brought a couple of guys up from Puerto Rico there. And they got, they said, oh, there's a couple of guys from Puerto Rico here. Oh, look, let's, you know, we're going to back Puerto Rico when we get. And I'm going, are you kidding me? What, are you going to throw more paper towels at them? Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, you, you kidding me? And, and, and I watched a couple of those rallies during the week and I went, this is the same old show. It's not. Well, you know what rally. I saw? It's it's not, it hasn't changed in 10 years. I mean, it's... Nothing. You know. Nothing has changed. I hope I don't get this version of COVID if it makes you watch that much Fox News. Mm. Uh, was, you know, nothing else to do. How bad was your COVID? Mm. Nah, it was just like a cold. Yeah. All three of us got it. My wife started and then gave it to me and then gave it to my wife, my kid. Mm. My kid's just getting the tail end of it now. Yeah, well, how about how she... Uh, so how they all do? I mean, it's fine, right? Yeah, we're all fine. Yeah. I'm done. By the time I got to my doctor who called me two days later and said, oh, I got some Paxlovid for you. I said, well, it's day five. Doesn't, never mind. I'll just keep it for next time. He never called you? Oh, <laughs> asshole. I would say that if you were a doctor and somebody called you and said, I have a COVID. And I'm a high risk patient out of the three of us. Uh, yeah. And you would, yep. you would go out of your way. To, nope. you know, to, to call him back immediately and say you need I to I called him story. twice. Three times, actually. Oh, boy. You must have Kaiser. Nope. <laughs> this oh. guy's usually really good. And it pissed me off, and I'm letting him know about it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me. I got to blow my Either nose. Way, <sighs> gotta blow I don't care. It was just fucking cold as far as I'm concerned. I just wanted to make sure I got it taken care of, so... Yeah, I mean, I just think that it's... But, yeah, it, it, it was just amazing to see see that. And, you know, it's no different than it was four years ago. Right. I mean, that's... But the thing is, is, like, I know he still has all these dedicated people and everything, but... Exactly. I mean, the good news and the challenge for him is that he he has to grow that base. Because, right. I mean, listen, he has lost the popular vote. The last two times. No, the last is, three times. He, oh, last uh, two times, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, and he is not, a, you know, ahead in national polls. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what I'm saying. He has to bring more people into his tent 
right? And you can tell that he is getting oh. desperate now by bringing up the IVF situation because he's he yeah. knows shit's going going down, and right. he has to bring up something to try and bring a few of these independents or whatever. Well, also, them, but he's not up. saying how he's going to pay for it no. or how you're going to pay for it or how no, you're going to... he said the government's going to pay for it. Well, that, 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 that ain't going to be... But, that's or, easy or, to say or, no or, afterwards. Or we're going to make your... party isn't going to vote for that, you know. No, that's the no. thing. You know. He might piss off more Republicans to, you know, I, mean, I know that. that I, I know that he's out there today making waves again because now he's back against the abortions. You know, because mm-hmm. the ballot initiative that's in Florida, apparently, I haven't read much about it. He got asked how, if he was going to vote in Florida, you know, because he lives there, how he would vote for it. And apparently he's he's either going to vote for or against it, whichever one makes it hard, you know, it, more impossible to get an abortion in Florida. I, I don't know what the initiative says and all that. So I don't know. I didn't read the article yet. But, you know, I just heard that, you know, he's back. Taking an, an extreme state, which you know what is good news for us. Go ahead, then, bro. I mean, you know, exactly. Around. That's the what I was. That's all that. I kept thinking is, you know what, this guy is looking more and more like Biden. Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> but you do know that the Democrats want out of abor- his mind. want abortion after birth. You realize that, don't you? Yeah, sure. Right. In oh, fact, yeah. in fact, they I, kill I will go on. I will go on record right now as saying I'm for retroactive abortion, and right. we should start with Trump. Seventy-eight okay. years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, so, you know, given that challenge that he has to grow it and all that, he's up against it and it's impossible. And all that is true. But again, the only thing that offsets that is if our people, whatever you want to call it, don't turn out. Correct. And then you, you know, then you give it to him. And the you Democrats know? are known for right. being lazy and you saying, know, so oh, we got this in the bag. Well, well, They'll take it, care it, of it. This Somebody time, else will take This care time, of it. though, they have a, a an excitement built in. Like, I wasn't going to go vote. And I'll tell you why. I've said it many times. I don't need to. New York is going to go for the Democratic. Uh, That's the attitude. Yeah. Though. Now, wait That's a minute. That's the wait attitude. Minute. Wait a minute. Okay. But I'm going to vote this year because I want to vote for her. Okay. She excites me. Good. She gives me the incentive to go out and vote for her. And I think and hopefully that's, there's more people like that. And I think a lot of those people who would have stayed at home if it was Biden are going to turn out. And if that's the case, she, they're going to win a lot of places they didn't expect to win. Well, right. yeah. but but the other, I mean, but they they don't only really have to have it. I mean, they need it. Yes. It's so crucial. Yeah. In places, you know, in a place like Ohio, where. She probably really isn't going to win, but those same people are going to click the ballot for Sherrod Brown and make sure that they don't flip this Senate seat. What if, what if he wins Texas like we think he will, but somehow all these people turning out throw Ted Cruz out of the Senate? There's yes. a good chance I of mean, that. You know, I mean, that kind of shit's what's got to. I mean, that stuff would be a sea change, and it would make it obvious that we could put this shit in the rearview mirror finally. You know, but. Uh, but we're like I said, we're all just sitting around waiting. You know, I was um, we just get this shit done tomorrow. But right. you know, that's yeah. well, we're going we're, now. we're going to we're <laughs> going to Paris on the seventh of uh, of November, and Marjorie said, "Yeah, we're going there after to either celebrate the election or to not come back." Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm very I'm in a similar situation. I took that entire week off of work, and my wife and I are going to. Hotel downtown uh, election night to, you know, watch the results and everything. And, you know, I took the week off so that I, you know, I mean, that's, I, I was going to take a week off at some point anyway. So I took it there and that way we can go vote and I'll be available to watch the coverage all week or whatever. Cause, you know, we don't, we don't know if we'll know election night. I mean, you know, the last few elections we haven't. No, we haven't. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would like for this one to, to have numbers that would make that possible. And I think that would be, the greatest possible thing that can happen to move our country forward, you know, just slam dunk it, you know, to, to go that way. Not that if it doesn't, we still can't get back where we need to be, but it would just be, that would be a perfect scenario is if, you know, at 12 at midnight or one o'clock in the morning, the news organizations are able to say, all right, it's done. You know, we're ready to call pretty much all these States and this will decide it. But uh, I don't know if that'll happen, but I hope so. Like I said, I took some time off to to be able to watch it and hopefully soak it in. But like you said, it's it's 
it's either going to be like damn near euphoria or you know whatever the opposite of euphoria. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> you know what I mean, so it it's it's. I mean, mm. we need it, you know, because uh, yeah, I don't know what people are thinking. I mean, you know, the the guy who has never heard of all these people at the Heritage Foundation now in a few days is going to go make a speech at the Heritage Foundation, right? You know, I mean, he just, he, you know, he talks in circles. I mean, don't let this stuff fool you that if you think these radical people that have attached themselves to him are, and hooked their claws into him aren't going to get a bunch of things they want if he gets reelected, you're wrong because he's just not smart enough to realize he's being used. Yeah. For everyone that thinks he's so smart, he's not. All you He's have not to all using you... anyone, they're using him. They've been using him for yep. damn near ten years. Well, all you have to do is a tool that's being tooled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a bit. You know, all you have to do is to uh, uh, say nice things to him about himself, mm-hmm. and yeah. and he's yeah. on your side. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. He, he. This guy. This guy is a sociopath. He's the worst kind of sociopath. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that because I, you know, I'm, I'm sure, I almost wish we had Phil here just so I could hear somebody say they love him, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it, I'll, I'll make a three-way call with him uh, every time we talk about him. A, a three-way call? Yeah, I mean, I, Jesus, every time. God, aren't you glad Trump's doing so well and He's going to show the world, show the country that Kamala doesn't deserve it. I'm like, I disagree with you, Phil. And he's like, I know you're going to vote for him again. I'm like, you know, I only make a mistake like that once. Yeah. Yeah, because you voted for him when? In uh, 2020. 2020. Yeah. Why didn't you vote for him in uh, 2016? 16. Uh, I don't know. Because I, I wanted to see a woman president. Uh, mm. Okay. Mm. You know. Hey, Alex, can we talk you into doing a special Tuesday night show on November 5th? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, sure. We could do that. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 there's no reason to because it's not going to be settled by the time I go off the air yeah, here. probably not. No, I, I think it'll take, you know, if it... If it's done that night, it'll it, it'll probably be well into the night. I mean, yeah, but like when 2016, it was like two or three o'clock in the morning. And we will you know, have Alex a sh- will do it, Charlie, as long as you're awake until it ends. And yeah. we we will have a show on the following night. I'm not going to Europe till the seventh. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I'm only gone for five days, something like that. What I'm waiting for is the rioting after the uh, after oh. you know like in San Francisco and stuff. Either way, there's going to be riots. No, I hope not. But, you know, like, I don't think it's going to riot in California. Why would it riot there? That's where all the Democrats. They, they did. They did when he got elected in '16. That's um, when he got elected. Yeah. Right. But it's just, yeah. Well, I, I think the slogan yeah. should be, you know, uh, "Come for the election, stay for the riots." You know. Uh, it's just, you know, I mean, according to Trump, you know, he 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 should win California. They just don't count the votes right. Oh, he says he already won California. Right. You know, it's it's because he's very popular in California. You know, I mean, uh, if, you know, if Jesus counted the votes. Well, he the, no, the only reason yeah, he's right. going to lose California is because of all those immigrants swarming over the. Uh, right. That's yeah. yeah. yeah right. Uh, you know, I. that's what I'm saying. He says the most ridiculous I, you know, if a candidate wants to say, you know, I I should win or what, I mean, I get some of that, but he gets over the top with it with, you know, these overtones of, you know, you know, violence and, you know, I should win. And, you know, and if I don't, obviously, you know, we need to, that's a problem and we need to take care of that. And, you know, like, what the fuck does any of that even mean? You know, it's just, I'm sick and tired of it. And I just wish other people would wake up and be sick and tired of it. Yeah, no, that's why I watch find him. someone else. That's why I watch him, just to make sure uh, yeah. these people that are watching him, I know what their heads are at. Yeah, and, I, and I, you know, it tortures me to watch him, but you know, oh. I got to sit there and do it. Okay. You got to have a, you know, a good. You can study the guy and just look at him and go, well, "This is a psychological experiment." 
to be honest with you. It really is. And I mean, I the guy is out can, of his freaking mind. I mean, I normally can put up with whatever, but I'm. I mean, I'm just being honest. I I have a pretty hard time listening to him talk. For oh, I know more oh, than yeah. like. It's not like I sit there. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll get up and walk yeah. around and listen to him. But yeah. it's like, <laughs> I mean, I I have to take it in small little pieces, you know. But it's so, it's so. it's interesting to watch a person act like that to me it's interesting to see a person actually actually stand in front of people and act like that yeah. over and over yeah. and over and over again right it's just amazing that people actually follow it is by what the gets way me. this is uh this is according to drudge or at least is on drudge's site yeah. uh kamala harris has surged ahead of donald trump 48 percent to 43 percent in the usa today suffolk university poll Yep. Well, his new his new name for uh, Walls is Tampon Tim today. Okay. Well, that's, that's Tampon great. Tim. They're Wait, having they're trouble finding stuff. stuff on on him. No, I know women will really latch onto that and be. Oh, you betcha! And there was yeah. there were some women behind him that were just sitting there going, "Huh?" Well, oh, he yeah. could come Yay. up with a name for Kamala, but Kamala, but it won't it won't be very good. It it, it uh, yeah. uh, you know it uh, it uh, rhymes but, with Trump. If you give you know, women uh, free tampons, yeah. are you thinking that's not going to make them vote for you? I don't. That's exactly what I was saying. That's and like if kept... you gave men free beer. Oh, I never vote for that guy. Gave me free beer. Fuck that's that right. Guy. God damn no. <laughs> yeah, it it just blew me away, and I'm going. You got eighty women sitting behind you, and you're calling them tampon Tim. I, I, yeah, I mean, that's some of the stuff that his campaign's evolved into since Harris is he's just so erratic that it's he's just all over the place. Like. Uh, don't you know that those things are actually pretty popular with people? Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, he did a really he did a really good job at Arlington. That I really was just going to say the spin shit. they're putting on that now. That's that stuff makes me sick. No, they're uh, trying that, to put that, spin on it, but nobody's buying it. Nobody's. No, buying oh, he it. went through a whole diatribe on that one today yep. too. Yep. He sure did I mean, about how uh, the, the family it was a and the beautiful soldier day. asked him to get the picture, and hey, it doesn't hey, matter. It's it was... against the law. Section sixty is against right. federal law. Period. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I've been there before, and yeah, I've been there too. Clear about it, you know that you know personal use, but this is yeah. you know if you're a reporter, a blogger. Or whatever, you know. I mean, if, if you don't do that shit, if this is your grandfather and you're going to take a picture of the grave and you're going to take it home and you're going to hang it on your wall, that's fine. Yep. It's yeah. not for publication. He it's stood for... there and talked about oh, the beautiful marble and the beautiful name carved in the beautiful oh, marble Here, on a beautiful how about, how, how day. And the this? lady was crying, this? and about, I stood there and got a picture, and it's like a how about whole this? diatribe. How about this in front of the uh, tombstones? Right. Yeah. yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah, I don't. Well, I, we know he's not pro military, so. Yeah. I don't understand it. You know, and, and part of that ruling, by the way, is that, yes, you can use a photograph for your own personal use at home because you want a picture of the tombstone of your loved one or whatever. And that's fine. That's okay. But you can't use it for anything else. And yet he's posting that whole thing on TikTok. Yeah. And yeah, then he's it blaming is, uh, it on other people who work for him. Oh, is that how you're going to run the presidency? You're not going to be the boss? Is that how you yeah. ran Trump Industries or That's whatever? how he always did. He, he did. Yeah. He yeah. did run it that way. Yeah. You know, turn around and blame other people for something. Look what he did with Cohen. He blamed Cohen for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And Cohen was an idiot enough at the time to put up with it. Right. He was the fixer and he was Lots the, take, the shit taker. Yeah. Lots of money, Cohen. Was That's here. why I call him a typical <laughs> boss. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the disrespect at the cemetery. I mean, you know, no matter which way you cut it, technicality, if you believe that or whatever, it, it's still very disrespectful. You know, in my yeah. opinion, every time I've ever visited those places, and I've been to many, uh, you know, I'm, I don't do the pictures mm. and the whole thing. I mean, you know, I'm not saying maybe my wife and I didn't snap a picture of the overall whatever right. but i mean i i don't pose for selfies in front of you know i just don't i mean and that maybe that's me and you know people don't care but i mean i just i've visited places like that many times and knew the story and you know knew what happened and knew how 
those yeah, men but you, those you're men not running for office gotten to the ground yeah. you know you're and not running for just, office just, mm-hmm. i, just I can't, can't, I can't yeah. believe that we've reached a point where that kind of stuff happens and people defend it you know i mean i just right. can't imagine if obama had done that in 2008 oh. If, I mean, if I Kamala can't. did it tomorrow, <laughs> they'd be on her ass for that. Oh, well, I agree. Yeah, but you know, I, I mean, I just, I, 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 I would rather see Kamala in front of Trump's grave going like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway. I mean, you know, just a, a thumb up was what I saw, and I went, "What? Yeah, yeah what? Yeah, yeah it's not, sick. you know, it's not a good look to me, mm-hmm. but you know, it, it just." He, he doesn't get it. I, you know, I don't know. He just doesn't get it. I mean, I, I just was... <laughs> I was he... watching this thing the other day, three or four days ago, for example, about... from President Obama's foundation that's building a library, and it was this interview with him and Admiral McRaven, and they were talking about the night that they killed Osama bin Laden and everything and then they were McCraven is the one who started talking and he you know he said that a few days after that they all they took a bunch of people that it had to do with the raid and a bunch of people from the units and all that i think to fort campbell or somewhere and obama flew in and he went into a back room and he met with the team that did the raid privately because they didn't want anyone to know who those guys were but then he came out and he gave a speech and everything and he said, you know, afterward, when there were no cameras around, or which his, you know, he's like, which, trust me, Obama's staff was not liking and all that. There were no cameras around. He's like, this entire hangar full of people, President Obama stayed for hours and 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 shook everyone's hand, and he spoke to everyone that had anything to do with the raid, and none of this was in the press. No, you know, He's no. like, it. this was the kind of president that he was, you know, I mean... Trump is Trump would have had that made into a documentary about Trump. Right. You know, yeah. you know I mean, I don't, you know, he's like, he, this wasn't used in an ad. This wasn't on CNN when all the cameras were done and the speech was over and the C-SPAN turned their cameras off and the whole thing, he shared a private moment and shook the hands of a couple hundred people, you know, that, mm-hmm ran the joint special operations command and all that you know and he's like this was i you know and and by the time he got done saying it i mean this is admiral mcraven he used to run jsoc and everything you know he's crying you know he's like i've i've just i had never seen anything like it you know i I, he's, he's like you know it was just you know he was just very touched by it you know i mean he was just like you know i had just never seen Anyone that had that job take that much time to tell each and every person, thank you, you know, and how how proud they should all be, you know, the whole bit, you know, what I mean, but it was yeah. real. It was. By the yeah. way, I read something Trump where was, Trump hey. Trump was railing against Obama again. Yeah, Doesn't he realize this guy hasn't been president for how many years now? Uh, he's a little he's a little jelly, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. Obama pretty popular and all that, you know. So he got the little bit of jealousness going on. Yeah, I mean, Ob- you know, Obama made his little uh, thing on stage there. Oh yeah, that, that, thing. that pissed Trump off. Yeah, well, you know what they're what they're talking about. Let's see, is this uh, is this Brie? I guess it is. I I don't know. It's a little mm-hmm. late for Brie, but let me let me just put is my it time for Don Giller. Don Giller. Yeah, let me put my camera <laughs> on just for a <laughs> second, uh, so that you know, in case it it's somebody else trying to get on here. Uh, 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 let's see here. Is he there? Uh, there, there's Bree. Okay, yeah. all righty. Okay, we can go back to that. Hi, Bree. How you doing? Hello. Yeah, I'm good. I just uh, passed through security, so wanted to get in here earlier, but you anyway, passed. You passed that. what? Passed through security to get on the Gabnet? <laughs> no, at the airport. Oh, you're at the there airport. I see. Okay. Oh, yeah. so you're on the sterile mm-hmm. side. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, and you're going down to where well, you're going to uh, Vietnam, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. And how we'll long? Take a look at the uh, flights are here. Yeah. How long are you going to be down there? Oh, hello. Can you hear yeah. me, Brian? Actually, my. 
Flight is not on. Flight, flight's not on there? Yeah. You're breaking. You uh, yeah. yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, I shouldn't move around so much. You're kind of breaking up Go on back us. to my seat here. Yeah, yeah. You're, break, you're a little, you know, a little, little stuttery there. But we, we kind of, it's not beyond belief that a airline isn't good at Wi-Fi. So, you know. Yeah. But, uh. Anyway, well, I'm not on Wi-Fi. I'm on my 5G. Oh, really? So I don't know. Oh, oh. Well, even oh, even know. worse, I guess. Uh, uh, <laughs> Tony, 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 I haven't even said hello to you. How are you, Tony? I was enjoying the show, so I figured I'd call in. I'm. I think Josh is right about the election. It's close, but guys, I'm scared about the silent. I don't buy the polls. I really don't. What, which, just, well, which ones don't you buy? I don't. Why do I have a feeling she's not in the lead? Oh, I think she is. I think I maybe think I maybe if you're not going to believe the polls, <laughs> it might be that they're underestimating. I hope you're right. I really do. You know, I just, I don't know. I just I don't have. A I don't good know feeling. if the polls are right, and what difference does it make? Yeah. I, yeah. Because I remember, you know what it is? I still remember Hillary Clinton that uh, when I was looking at the Times and the Daily News a couple of days before the election, they had her in a landslide. They had her yeah. in mm -hmm. all wrapped up. And when I came yeah. home that night, I helped, I was wor working the polls. And the cop tells me, what's going on? I says, and I looked at the TV, he says, he's winning. I says, he's winning. Let me tell you something, guys. I think you can fuck with the polls. I'll tell you. I think you can fuck with the polls. No, they no. learned from that. They know not to just I, tell the no, national polls. No, no, polls. he's absolutely right. The they, they, they admitted they had made a lot of mistakes in their polling, because they were polling on a different level, uh, and now they're watching out for this. There may be much right. more. They may be much by over three million votes. The, the, uh, the actual ballots. Uh, you see, they, they were going by the normal thing, which would say, okay, this person gets more votes than anybody mm -hmm. else, therefore they yeah. must win. The fact was yeah. that what he won, he, they were right about that. They were yeah. absolutely yeah. spot on right. But she still didn't win because of the Electoral yeah. College. The electoral college. You know. Yeah. 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 What? They had misjudged and... Uh, had some issues in a few states, you know, that turned out to be very crucial. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I think they're being far more careful now. And, yeah. uh, you know... Yeah, uh, I mean, I think everyone for sure is definitely, you know, yeah. hesitating to make any yeah. kind of assumptions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's... it's uh, Like, let me look they at... They say that uh, voter registration is up. Yeah. Is yeah. that true? That's yes. true in Texas. Yes, Believe it is. So. Uh, Nate that Silver generally favors Democrats. Yep. Nate Silver in the national polls has Harris at forty nine percent and Trump at forty five point seven percent. In uh, in Arizona, and there's a four percent plus or minus, right? Arizona mm -hmm. has him tied. Uh, in Georgia, they have him tied. Mm -hmm. Uh, in uh, let's Texas. see here, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, they have uh, he she has forty eight point four, he has forty six point five. So you know, I mean, it's all within the margin of error. It's all within the margin yeah. of error at this point. But you know, that's why we gotta have a turnout. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know. listen to a lot of people, and they're just not talking about it. What do you mean? Well, not you're in Connecticut. We can understand. That. I know, but you what do you know, mean? Like it's almost like is it like a silent know. vote, Jeff? You think where they don't want to say who they're voting for? I think they're just keeping their mouth shut. They're not mm. that interested. And that's another thing to look out. Yeah, it just bothers me. Yeah, because if they don't want to tell you who they're voting for, I would say that's a Trump vote. No, not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily. I'm just going to give you my yeah. opinion. You know, uh, they may be. Yeah, they I'm may... with you on that. Well, they, they may live in a whole. They may live on. They don't want their husbands to know that they're going to vote for Harry. Uh, that, that's that's got to be Bree's uh, 
Oh, so all of a sudden it's working good. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't understand a word. It was all gobbledygook to me. So, mm. yeah. I mean, I would agree with uh, uh, Jeff, though, that this isn't really. We talk about this on the show on Friday nights, uh, but I, I, I don't hear a lot of conversation about it yeah. anywhere else. I hear people talking about other stuff. You know, like at work and, you know, just out, you know, socially or whatever, I, I don't find, you know, because I think most people just feel like, you know, their mind's made up and, you know. That or they don't want to get in an argument, which yeah. is most well, of the I case. Well, I mean, yeah. certainly I think there's a lot of people, especially if they're going to vote for Harris, like in an area where I live. Yep. It's like, I'm just going to go vote for Harris, but I really don't need to tell all these people about it because yep. they'll just. I don't want to you know, deal with it. Communist or whatever. And I don't want to deal with listening. I mean, that's yeah. fair enough. Right. I mean, yeah. I certainly that feel like, that. you know, I mean, people do. I think that's most of it. People have come to avoid it uh, basically just for the sake of peace and quiet, you know, like well, with people that you otherwise get along with, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, you ever watch those. Uh, Are you there? The, the man in the street interview. That Jimmy Kimmel does or Jimmy Fallon. And they'll hold up a picture of, you know, Kamala Harris. They'll say, who's this? You know, th th I'm talking like three or four months ago. And they'll yeah. say, oh, that's uh, Oprah Winfrey. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> like most people just don't know. They, they ask people, I, I swear to goodness, I saw this. Who is on the nickel? Who is on the dime? Who's mm -hmm. on the quarter? Who, and and every, when you, every president you get right, you get to keep the money. And people can't get past the dime. Right. Yeah. You know? So... <laughs> Geography is even worse. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, we do we do certainly have a relatively uninformed electorate. I mean, there's no doubt. Okay. I mean, you know, we can kind of get a group of people like this together, and it can maybe not seem that way, but you know, uh, <laughs> you got in a much larger group like at your workplaces and stuff. Yeah, I think a lot of people probably experience the same thing that I do, which is some yeah. people really don't understand even, how government works at all even when I'm, even when i'm in you know thailand or the philippines like i know people in thailand and i'll meet them they they just want to they just have to know like how are they going to make money to eat that day like and for that week and how is their parent going to get xyz they have no idea about their own government or who's running it or why you know they barely know these things they just it just it doesn't affect their lives and if it doesn't affect their lives they've got to eat they've got to work and that's what they want to do and i, I think there's a lot of that everywhere yeah well i, I it, look that mm -hmm. that's a major consideration today too you know i mean things are expensive um uh, uh, and and while i could explain to people you can't blame it on the administration because you've got to blame it on people who are taking advantage of the of the uh, of the public, and are really what's the word we're looking for opportunistic, and raising yeah. their prices and saying, oh, we got to charge this much for for meat now, you know, because it's uh, just costing us that much more, and it isn't really, but they see a windfall for themselves. I hear people still complaining about the price of gas. I just paid two dollars and sixty eight cents a gallon. Yes, yeah. oh, it's all Biden's fault. It's all yeah. Biden's fault. Yeah. Right. I mean, two sixty-eight. <laughs> it was up five, six dollars a gallon. It's all his fault. Uh, it's still four and a half dollars a gallon here. Yeah. Anyway. Something that seems to be doing very well. It was only a dollar seventy-three in Canada. I got. Liter. I'm playing the theme per now. Per liter. I'm playing the theme as you can probably hear it. Uh, and uh, 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 Giller hasn't called yet, so I guess we aren't going to get a call from <laughs> yeah. him tonight. Uh, last we got 30 seconds. Callers. Yes. Jeff, yeah. thank you so much for calling tonight. And yeah. thanks to Josh. Thanks to Charlie. <laughs> thanks to Alan. Thanks to, uh, good to see you're back without the COVID now, Kevin. Uh, okay. Thanks, Tony, for being here. And look who's there in 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 very good picture too right now yeah. in Malaysia, getting ready to get onto a plane to go to Vietnam, and uh, join our services over there and fight the <laughs> good war. No, wait a minute. 
Anyway, everybody, give yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. We'll get another one going here on uh, on Monday on Facebook when we do the pop-up show. So I hope you'll join us for that. In the meantime, stay tuned for uh, Amy. She seems to be back again tonight. And we'll see you again next, uh, let's see here, next Wednesday at, uh, at 1030 Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. This is a test. <laughs>